Well, folks, welcome to another Shop Talk, and we are here with Bobby Lopez, and we're going to talk a little bit about Bobby's career. Uh, Bobby, how'd you get started in racing? Well, when I was a kid, we uh, started going to Riverside in approximately 85, 86. My mom and dad decided one night that, well, we'll just go to the racetrack. My dad never really cared for racing, but that first night, my mom was hooked. So we started going back, and we took my aunt, and then uh, she started dating ed bubba klein and after that it was history yeah i don't like i said i don't think my folks missed a race up until the day pretty much my dad retired huh. um i think my dad was a cameraman at i-35 for a while i mean we was all over the place we followed him from all the way to savannah to i-70 lakeside riverside you name it every track they was at we was there watching from yeah. the time i was a kid till well, even now, if I'm not working as a tech guy, I'll go help them as much as I can. I, I'm going to say I'm sometimes surprised I go to the racetrack and a lot of these people that you see racing will be at somebody else's track on a different night. And yeah. So, that you know, it just shows they're just true race fans and really love the sport. Well, you ought to be a tech guy and go to a racetrack. I show up I-35 after the season's over with or some other track. Kind of, guys kind of give you dirty looks and stuff. You, you never know what to think. <laughs> it is a, a different hobby, we'll call it. <laughs> in 2001, tell me a little bit about what Bobby Lopez was doing in 2001. Well, in 2001, my wife was pregnant with our twins. And... Uh, I got the harebrained idea that I was going to go ahead and start racing, so Bub and I went and bought a car, and we brought it back up here to the shop, and we started building this car, and it was an IMCA legal car. Well, Winston, we decided we was going to run at I-35, and Winston wasn't going to run IMCA, so we went into what they called the super stock class back then, mm -hmm. and we ran this car up there. We ran it at Bethany. You know, we... We did, we did fairly well in it. And then they decided to make some changes in that class. And uh, at the time, I didn't particularly care for the changes they were going to do, so I decided to sell the car. And once I sold the car, I had Dave Bozak build me a B-Mod. And uh, we came back the next year and ran B-Mod for a full season. And, uh, you know, it was basically an A-Mod with a two-barrel. It's oh. different than our B-Mods we got now. And uh, we we had some real good success in that class, and with the help of Bubba and them, you know, it even got better. And uh, towards the end of that season, they decided that they was going to drop that class. So here I was in two classes they already decided to drop. So we got the idea that we just I just make her an A mod. Mm -hmm. So we went up to I-35 the first night that they were open, and that was the first year they went to IMCA. And they came around inspecting the car and said the body was a quarter inch too long on the front. Darn tech guys. I, I, I'll tell you what, I was so hot, I was never so mad in my life. A quarter inch too long on the bottom. They said, if you just cut it off, you're good. Well, it just ticked me off so bad, I didn't go back. Yeah. And uh, so we decided to start running at Valley Speedway, and and uh, then we started running down at Warrensburg, and we had good runs down there, too. I mean, both tracks, pretty, yeah. pretty good competition, and towards the end of that one that one year we decided that uh, money was getting tight with the twins they were starting to get older mama was trying to have to hold two of them at uh -huh. one time and we just decided to sell out right and we sold out and i showed up to the racetrack one night and uh, bubba was helping uh, mark evinger down at valley tech because they lost their tech guy and i got conned into doing that and i still haven't been able to get out of it <laughs> Uh, kind of followed Bubba into that also. Kind of leading you down the trail, isn't he? Yeah, he he, he did me wrong, though, because he kind of told me, he said, I'm only going to do this for the rest of the year, and I'm going back to racing B-Mods next year. So there I was left by myself. <laughs> uh, you've been a tech person now. If I leave any out, you fill me in. But uh, we've mentioned Valley, CMS. You've done some at L.A., of course, Lakeside now. And also, during the state fair, you've been a tech person down there. Now, is there any besides those? You mentioned Monette. What, what, what was your connection with Monette? Well, I just, with Monette and them, I just go, I've been down there to watch them race. And, okay. I've, and this, this coming up year, the 2010 year, I've probably talked to pretty much every racetrack in Missouri, Kansas, and uh -huh. you name it. So I've kind of got to 
talking to those guys too about their rules. Okay. But I used to go down and watch, watch Bubba. He went down there, and I don't remember. I've been down there so many times to play when I was a younger guy just yeah. to have something to do. Okay. You know. Okay, that that kind of covers where you you have been a tech person. Uh, also, uh, uh, what I wanted to cover was the part about the driving to show that you've had the time in the car, you've had your feet on the pedals, hands on the wheel, you've done it. Uh, give us a little idea, uh, Bobby, of your background as far as mechanical ability. Well, I've I've been in the uh, body shop industry for many years now. And uh, I started out kind of when I was younger with a guy up in my hometown of Winston. I was started out doing Thunderbirds and stuff and, and uh, decided I was going to become a welder. And then that didn't last very long. I welded for actually a couple of years, but was still working in the body shop at night and uh, went to work as a body man. And then mm. once I moved down to Kansas City and started working down here I started getting into the ASE classes I started getting into the iCar classes mm -hmm. and stuff like that and I eventually got on to Chevrolet iCar Ford iCar uh, Volkswagen Mazda I mean it, it almost seems like you got so many certificates you don't know what to do with them <laughs> <laughs> or even if they're worth anything I'm not even sure if they're worth hanging on the wall anymore I was going to say anybody ever walk in your shop and say let me see your ASE ticket <laughs> or your certificate? Well, I keep my I keep my ASE card with me most of the time, uh, and it's kind of funny because when you get you know the cards, you kind of feel special. But anymore, I don't feel so special. <laughs> Does a tech person have to buy all their own tools? I know stuff has gotten so high tech at the racetrack uh, that I know there are certain items that you need to be able to check some of the electronic stuff and different things. Do you have to buy your own stuff? I don't know for I don't know for a fact that at every track you have to buy your own equipment. I know I preferred to buy my own equipment and the reason why I preferred to do it was is because I've I'm not a uh, I don't know how to say it. I, I want to buy try to buy the best that I can buy uh -huh. and I've always bought everything that everything that I have I own so I know a lot of guys at a lot of tracks do buy their own yeah. stuff a lot of tracks make their own stuff um, I mean there's a lot of equipment that you can make like measuring wheelbase and stuff mm -hmm. like that you can make that it's not that hard but I've got quite a few dollars wrapped up yeah. in, in tech equipment so when you show up, the tools come with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> the traveling circus is what my wife calls it. <laughs> when you uh, do this, I'm sure you guys get paid. I mean, you have to get paid because it's, it's a lot of work. But besides that, is there some kind of self-satisfaction or whatever that a tech person gets? I mean, I, to be honest, in my mind, I have trouble seen what the rewards I mean I think we all do things of different kind for some reward what is the reward for a tech man at the end of the night or is there I mean is that why you do it that's a, 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 cold, a cold beer would be nice but <laughs> 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 uh, the, the only reward I've ever got out of this is in my racing experience the rules just weren't enforced uh -huh. and I had guys out running me buy stuff that I didn't have because I looked at the rules and it, you know, and I hope the guys that race where I tech feel like I do a good job because that, th that's my satisfaction. When I got a guy or I got people out of the stands coming up to me saying, you did a good job tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's bad when you say someone comes up and says you did a good job when you DQ'd that guy, but if someone's DQ'd, it's because they probably deserved it. Right, right, right. Uh, we're getting down here close to the end of the first segment, um, and uh, we may have to close it up because I'm not sure I got another question. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, folks, we're going to end part one here, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. So make sure and come back for part two, and we're going to start talking about Bobby Lopez's tech and where we're going to ask him some tech questions. <laughs> so <laughs> make sure and come back. All right, on that note, I got to pee. <laughs> <laughs>